he is professor i am trichy he is professor in operations and management and decision science area at i am trichy he is he obtained his <coughs> doctorate from industrial and system engineering department of national uh, department national university of singapore after completing his masters in manufacturing system from bits pilani with distinctions he is also a qualified six sigma green belt uh previously he was post doctoral research fellow service science discipline information system school of queensland university of technology brisbane australia professor chakravarty has more than 11 year of experience in teaching business students and executives at various institutes such as queensland university james cook university australia singapore campus basically he has taught mba courses on service operations innovation management project management quality planning and management and quantitative techniques as a researcher professor chakravarty has worked closely with private and public sector organization in india singapore and with suncorp infosys australia and queensland government and uh, it is a proud moment as uh, i said uh, professor chakravarty is alumnus of rtu kota itself so sir has uh, you know no well about the rtu kota as well as iim system and uh, as he is closely related to management so it the session will be very useful for all the person who is dealing with any kind of management whether it is hod or uh, top level management so i hope uh, without taking much time i invite professor chakravarty please uh, start your uh, presentation sir and uh, guide us thank you sir thank you very much for a nice introduction thank you very much it's my pleasure here so yeah good morning all uh, yes i am an alumnus of rtu kota but that time it was not known as rtu kota it was known as engineering college kota that time uh, way back in 1998 i graduated from in production industrial engineer as a production industrial engineer for there so uh, it's, it's really a privilege for me to come back and provide an insight or discuss or present a session and to all of you so good morning all i hope all of you are doing good and taking care of yourself and and your yourself as well as your near ones okay so today uh, i'll talk about mostly research okay so given my experience and expertise in different countries at different institutes so i thought uh, it will be a good time to really discuss about when in india we are now looking for more research orientation to discuss and probably interact and uh, let's try to see that where we are and how can we become a bit more or rather we can work towards a bit more towards becoming a research university or research institutes okay so today the though it is in a presentation but i like to have i'll probably pause in between somewhere and like to see your views also because all of you i understand are in senior positions and giving direction to your own institutes so it will be really good to hear from you too your views or your understanding about those things okay so i'll now share my screen for my presentation and we can take the discussion from there on i hope the screen is visible to all of you okay so at uh, as i said to today's discussion will take a talk about research how we as institutes can become more research oriented iims are mostly known as the great management institutes but not all iims have gone into the research path but i am trichy for last few years we we came into existence in 2011 and in last couple of not couple of years maybe 3 4 years down the line we are actually focusing a bit more on research intensiveness too 
Okay, so I'll, I'll discuss about that also probably uh, about I am Trichy and how the research culture is getting developed here. But we'll see and also uh, as I hear from you, so then we can have a better interaction and understanding how each of us can become develop that research culture. Okay, this is just a disclaimer that uh, yes, the, the slides also contains, uh, of course, some pictures and others which have been taken from Google and I don't have the copyright. So definitely I'm not going to share these slides with you. Okay, uh, of course, if you need certain information, you can always drop me an mail or come back to me and I can always share some of those informations with you. So talking about evolution of academia, so it's, it's always about publish, publish, and later it started become publish or perish. Okay, now publishing has also come a long way and we as researchers now have to think what to publish and where to publish and what are the different channels. So there are now so many different things have come up and with the recent guidelines from UGC and AICT, so we have also the Scopus Index and Web of Science and so on. So there are various guidelines from the regulatory bodies, so which is also pushing us to think that we should now focus a bit more on how to publish in quality journals too. So today I think uh, uh, this is a very broad uh, or it might look a very exhaustive one, but we'll, we'll not go into deep into all this, but probably just touch upon all of these points, probably talking about teaching and research in higher education institutes. It is a new architecture because we have a new education policy coming in, which kicked in and because of that, how it is going to impact. And to understand what is a research university or how higher education institutes can become research in intensive, higher uh, institutes guiding, then we'll I'll probably discuss some, some pointers for to build a research culture here also focusing on research policies and implementation strategies. Again, as I said, I'm not going to go and discuss on the details of it, but probably certain pointers which can, which will be useful and later like to hear from you too. Research funding and grant proposal writing, if time permits, we'll, we'll see if we can, but I think this is more for to understand what are the different avenues for research funding and how we in the institutes can develop that culture to write proposals, grant proposals and so on. And then we'll have a con I'll conclude the sessions with summarizing the what we discussed today. And so this this is broadly the agenda for today's session here. So this I liked uh, this because uh, Adil Sadara is a very unknown academic in the field of management and he said it's will pursue an academic career and to it, it I feel I'm equally passionate about academia. When I came to that, I, I almost spent my whole, most of my time in academia, very little in industry. So that academia actually, I feel that yes, it's, it's a call and it, you need to have, be very passionate about that career and academic career goes beyond teaching. It's not only uh, teaching. Sorry to interrupt you, sir. Yeah. Sir, please uh, put your uh, PPTs on full screen mode, sir. please, sir. It's in full screen mode only. Oh. Okay, okay, sir. Uh, is there any concern with the visibility or? Uh, yeah, uh, it will be more visible if, uh, you know, uh, share your full screen because uh, you those uh, thumb lanes are also visible. No, now I have not put it, uh, I've just removed from full screen. That's why I just, uh, but earlier okay. it was on a full screen mode only. Okay, okay, okay sir. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yes, all of you now, I think really recognize this. This is the global concern nowadays, right? So since there is a global concern and there is also Globally, they are trying to find a solution. I connected with our discussion today is like, yes, we have a concern that yes, we as educational institutions, as universities, we really need to think about how to become, develop that research culture over a period of time and 
how to do it so we are also trying to find some solution right so this is where it aligns but the concern here is also there are so many ways to find the solution okay there is no one solution which fits all so that's where i think we really need to have this kind of discussions pretty on a regular basis to understand how we can develop certain solutions which actually will be context dependent and which will make will be useful for individual institutes and others too okay so going forward teaching and research so pre independence post independence yes this this uh, to early on in that when there is much more earlier it was more research uh, is there in colleges and universities but now if we look at our current the research either in the universities mostly in the research groups and functioning better than large collaborations so this i have a different view point because when we talk about uh, research in small research groups rather than having large collaborations because you have to think how the research can evolve whether the research can evolve in small groups or we definitely also need large collaborations so that's where there is a thought process which has to come through because when i went for my post doctoral fellowship from after uh, nus after doing my phd in nus when i went to this i school there is this uh, research groups were there they they also have in i school uh, one is a business process management group was there another is a technology group was there another is a service science group is there so they have small groups which are based on research they are there but in one of uh, my informal discussions with the head of school there with michael roseman there so he he said to, to told me and if you really want to grow as a researcher you should not stick to the small research group where you have been because i was put in the service science group because i was focusing on business service management he said if you are coming to the institute don't sit and work on the in just in the computer you go and meet people from other groups talk to them tell them what you are doing and ask them what they are doing and that's how you can make the group make yourself also broaden your skills you can broaden the skills and you can the groups can also go beyond their own that silo system in front instead of silo system you become more coherent within the groups to do different groups to and that i felt is was a very insightful thought from him and that actually changed my views because coming from nus nus is more like yes you do in your own silos you do the research though now and after that nus also has slowly moved on to more interdisciplinary research more group wise but it still there is that that let's focus on our research and we see what we can do sitting at single place so that's that's two different cultures two different view points but after going through this different cultures different view points i felt yes uh, doing interdisciplinary or meeting people and talking and developing a collaborative research helps i'll tell you later on uh, where it will be much more useful if we think start thinking about collaborative research if we start thinking about moving beyond a single institute or a single group or a single department okay so as it here says also the higher education institutes need to really get engaged in both of these things so for that we need radical changes is how we are teaching i think already with this pandemic has shown us that how we can change our teaching because suddenly from face to face we have to come to the online part and just yesterday i was teaching in executive education our ed executive education program and where i i i generally teach them statistics and uh, earlier i used to do it on the board and it was a different kind of setup for discussion in a face to face but suddenly on an online 
I have to bring in that similar flavor. So I, I was, for last two weeks, I was thinking about how to really bring that kind of experience there for this. So then I searched with, I talk with, spoke with my co colleagues who are already teaching and so on. And I came to know about jam boards and so on. There are different features, the Google Forms, of course, for quizzes and so on. So there are ways to really do that. And I, I tried it first time, the Google Jamboard I used and then it, it becomes very collaborative because everybody can then, every student can come in and they can also collaborate. They can show me that what they are doing. If I give them a problem, they can solve it and they can show it to me and that Jamboard that yes, this is what is the solution. So they also felt engaged in the class. Okay. So also when we do case-based in management schools, we are mostly doing case-based teaching. Of course, again, when we are talking about case-based teaching, there it is like we have to make the cases interesting. Nowadays, the students ask us when we teach them case-based teaching, they ask us whether can we have Indian context? What you are teaching us is a US context or European context. But we tell them that, see, the context might not be the Indian context, but what the concepts it is delivered through these cases are equally applicable in whatever context you use it. Yes, if it is an Indian context, we can probably certain factors might change, but overall the concept will not change. Whether it is in strategy, in operations, or marketing, or OBHR, wherever we are talking about it. Another thing is we have to really make this bureaucracy in individual institutions. Thus, I felt because working in different places, I came, I found that yes, this is one thing we probably sometimes have to change that. But See, just for an example, because if say I have seen uh, abroad when I was working that if you need any uh, travel grant, travel permission, you just, it, every permission can be done through a mail. Even the head of institution will say, yes, it is approved through mail and that is taken. But sometimes here, if I have to take a permission, then I have to go through, fill it different forms, put it to different levels and get it approved. And when again, you have to reimburse and so on. So there are a lot of things it's for research purpose. Also, there is needs to be if I have to go to a conference or if I have to take a research fund, there has to be some ease in the process. So that I think each individual institutions we have to here at I am slowly thinking of moving into this email based approvals. Though uh, we also understand because of the government audits. And since we are a government institute, we have to read through the audits so that that is a kind of you can say a bottleneck point a constraint point but still there can be ways to work around it so yes at IAMS also we are at at least I and I am Trichy we are working towards it and to see that how we can reduce this number of approvals part and less paperwork with less paperwork and Another is outside world, in particular to the industry. Again, I'll, I'll talk about my postdoc experience and that uh, the experience that I am Trichy. Uh, based on that, I'll, I'll give examples on that, and so that it will probably help. When I went to, uh, for postdoc, the, the postdoc I was given a postdoctoral fellowship of Smart Services CRC. So that's where first I got in 20, 2009. I, around that time, I first got an idea that there is a called a cooperative research center. What they do in, uh, in that is universities and industry and even sometimes the government. Like in our case, it was the Queensland state government. The state government was also involved in that. So in the, uh, the departments of state government. So they are involved. And what the industry have already identified certain problems in their uh, certain projects in their industry, uh, in their company. And there is a government also has in the particular department, they have found some projects which they feel they are not able to solve on their own. So they have collaborated the industry. They have said that we'll put funding and they, some of the universities like Queensland University of Technology and others, UQ and other universities, they said that yes, we'll be able to solve your problem. And they came together and they found this group where the university's resources were helping the industry and the government to solve their own problems. 
so that way it's, it became a very well knit community and industry was happy of course you have to be careful because when you discuss with with uh, when you interact with industry industry will not be looking for a solution in two years time in most of the cases it will be within six months to one year time the need for that so that interaction has to be quick enough so or the solution or the cycle time for finding the solution from the research world to the industry or practical practice world it has to be less but it gives a good insight because most of the time we always say we don't have a data we don't we don't know what to what is what the industry is facing what is the problem we can solve and as operations management researchers in who are in operations research and other more who are doing mathematical modeling we develop models by sitting a, and by doing simulation by getting some secondary data but at the end of the day not every time it is solving those models are not used by the industry they said we don't know about those models how to use it so same now the, coming to anthrichi i think last 5 6 years i am in 2014 when i joined with anthrichi last 6 years uh, we at anthrichi have really thought that we have to connect very well with the industry so we already have a very good connect with our networks in smes uh, in and around trichy as well as in chennai and madurai and coimbatore because these are all the belts where the smes are there and of course chennai is automobile hub so there is also the uh, there also we have a good connect so of course our executive programs and also our consultancy programs are helping us but other than that like i along with my colleagues have got two research fundings from by working with the industry one with the hospital here another with a it consultant so with them we have got certain research funding and we are because they had certain concerns the hospital has a concern that they want to find out how to get more patient engagement and get more patients there and how to uh, to see that how the interaction is happening of a patient inside the hospital so they they came to us and we did a patient journey map and so on so and then we have provided them with certain suggestions which they liked it and they have taken it forward so we at i am trichy also we are really focusing on not me and my colleagues others are also there who are really working with industries we have a separate data center here where tamil nadu government has uh, provided funding and we have a business analytics center that that center is now working with closely with tamil nadu government to solve the it related or e, the e governments e governance related concerns of tamil nadu government so this is again there is a an example where it shows that yes we as institutes are connected with we are connected with industry and trying to see and that actually helps much in our teaching also because when you take these examples and when in the management in this management schools we are getting students who are going to go into the industry in couple of years time and they and also they have internship because we i understand for other management schools also there might be internship we have two months internship in april and may so there also before that also they should have some uh, understanding about how the industry is practical side of the things so these kind of projects when we do with industry and we give them the examples in the class they also feel that yes these are not just the theoretical concepts there are concepts which can also be translated into the practical world and they see the usefulness i teach quality so again that that is very practice oriented quality you cannot learn by sitting in the class so my all classes are workshop based in quality so this again and because of my research with the industries it helped me a lot to connect through my course with the students and tell them the practical side of the things so as you can see here this students gain and develop patience skills for gathering synthesizing because here uh, i i'll give you again two examples from my current assignment one is here again when in the quality last time what we did uh, i took the students 30 students who have enrolled for my course 
we took them to some of the SMEs nearby and we told them that, yes, you go and interact with them and find out what are the process problems, what are the kind of concerns they're facing in the process or what are the quality problems they're facing and see with what tools and techniques you have learned and you're going to learn in this course, can you utilize those course? So some of, uh, some of these actually helped us because one of the company then uh, asked us to consult them because they are facing a lot of rejection in the process, product rejection, and their customers were not happy. So they came back to us, can you please help us in streamlining our process, see, look at the process. And one of the company has given us enough data. Now we are, I, along with my research students, we are now developing a teaching case based on that. So again, so students also gained and because they are see, see they saw the practical application of the tools as well as for industry also, it is a win-win situation. They see that there are resources which can help them. Okay, so this is one thing I felt is very important that we really need to look at as institutes and I think as engineering institutes, technical or management institutes, we definitely have to have better connect with industry because that will give us a lot of ideas for research too. Another thing we have to collaborate, not within, but also across different institutions too. Right, at IIM Techie, we have now developed over the years, some collaborations with institutions abroad, like we have in France, in Belgium, in other places in Europe, we have certain connects with the institutes where we have faculty and student in exchange happens. Even research collaborations happens because then the faculty can go and who are doing in a similar kind of research areas, they can go and discuss and they can see that what how they can collaborate in this. So across to this can be done within India also, within the country also. So because at IIM Techie, we our uh, mentor was uh, earlier IIM Bangalore. So with IIM Bangalore, we initially had could connect with about the research part. And here also within NIT, because Trichy is the educational institution hub. So education hub, so we have NIT Trichy, which is one of the best in the country. So again, NIT, Trichy Department of Management Studies and we also have very close collaborations in the area of research as well as teaching too. So it's better to harness those, those collaborations, those connections. And this actually helps the employability as it tells here. Now the thing is uh, balancing between teaching and research. I think this is another thing which we have to be very much aware of because sometimes in the midst of becoming too much research intensive institutes, we, become, uh, we try to start neglecting teaching. And I have seen that in close quarters and well as in NUS, Because in NUS, when I joined, it was just the time when NUS was trying to becoming, go higher up in the rankings. And it was invested heavily in their faculty, in recruiting faculties. And those are those faculties who have PhDs from best of the universities abroad, that is from US or Europe or from other places in the world as well as these were giving some of the best salaries highest salaries in Singapore the academicians that time the faculties were getting recruited were getting that but what happened with that is many of these are very good researchers but not all good researchers can be good teachers too they might be doing a good research by sitting on the computer and crunching data and developing models, best of the models, their publications are very high. 
in high rank journals but probably their teaching is not up to that level so that's where and because the tenure that is in uh, of course uh, probably you are all aware of um, if you are not that in universities abroad most of the time it is now i understand i am bangalore has also started that and i am ahmedabad probably have that kind of system but i am bangalore definitely have started that tenure that you have they will be given first 3 years to show your research caliber and next another based on your performance in the first 3 years another 3 years will be given so 6 years overall within that if you can prove yourself as one of the best researchers that yes you have been counted and you are able to publish in good journals then you have been given a tenure so that that actually put a lot of pressure at that time on the professors in NUS who joined because they have to just think about the tenure that time getting tenure so they focused a lot on the research and that's where NUS research output was very high and they did very well in the research and that's why now NUS is almost in the top 20s 20 or uh, top 30 institute universities in the world because it it has invested a lot in the getting that research culture built up but somewhere it has seen a decline in teaching not overall of course not but somewhere because of too much into the focus into the research has seen hey eh? so that's where we as universities colleges or institutes have to see how to balance it because here also at I am Trichy we initially thought of because we also have this two year probation period then the contract becoming contractual faculties becoming permanent there was a thought process that let's bring in the research culture and see that the faculty has to publish this much to get confirmed and so on but then again uh, we felt that this might lead to a wrong direction and the teaching might suffer so that's where we had to have a balance between that but now uh, we have a new work norm policy coming in pretty soon where there is going to be some balance between research and teaching of course there is going to be a bit more on the research as you go higher up on the ladder academic ladder like then probably your research intensiveness will be more not on publication but how bringing funding from outside okay that is another thing that i'll probably talk later on uh, if time permits today so about the grants because that is another thing which is very much prominent now abroad definitely and i think in certain institutes some high institutes or universities in india also are looking towards that so of course the the more we focus on research as we as researchers with industries then that will help us because the when we're talking about artificial intelligence machine learning industry 4.0 so definitely these are the things we can work closely with the industries to see what industry is doing and how we can come in and do better research and make them or make industry also solve their problems related to this. So that's where again we can, the institutes as higher education institutes, we can really think about developing those skills and that skills we can transmit, uh, we can really disseminate when you are taking the classes to the students. Another thing what we have observed over the years, I think now this new AICT and course curricula has come because there is a lot of uh, divergence and this we have found in I am Trichy too right? because uh, at I am Trichy in last two or three years because a uh, couple of years I was heading the placement chair as a as a placement chairperson i was there for antrichi so what we have done in the last couple of years two three years down the line is we have started making active participation from industry in that regard too to give you an example like uh, when i think 2011 we started and 2014 or not 2014 around 2016 or 17 we thought that now almost five and six years down the line, we have to see what are the course offerings we have as an institute. 
and what are the new course offerings we should have and how in the current courses we can also upgrade it so we had a program review committee who is now very closely working with that and may uh, already work a bit but further work is still going on and as i said last two years what we did is we have started involving in that program review committee from each area some industry expert too to come and say this is the course we are offering do you think as an industry expert do you feel that something is missing so that those inputs we felt are very important because then when we incorporate some of these things what the industry is looking for probably that industry will one thing is the industry will feel that yes they are also engaged got engaged in this another thing they also know when these students in two years time when they are coming out of the institute what skills they have already acquired also for all our courses we have more, uh, one and a half hours 20 sessions each course so what we do we earmark two sessions for each course for a guest faculty earlier it was mostly uh, to it was more either the somebody from academia who is an expert in that field or from industry but now for the last 3 4 years 2 3 years we have now strictly put it that the guest faculty has to be industry expert and say if i am teaching supply chain management so somebody who has a director or general manager or senior position in supply chain management can come in and give two sessions on that because then the students will see whatever the skills we are teaching in supply chain management whether it is what the industry is doing what is actually happening in industry so that gives a good connect Another is quantity and quality of research. Yes, this is again a very debatable one, but I think in the scenario, I have seen many institutes now where the focus is if you have better publications, if you have publications, publishing, so you can, then the promotion is depending on that number sometimes. So there are a lot of predatory journals coming in. And I think, uh, like me, probably many of you have experienced it uh, where our emails are spanned by that we have a high impact factor journals. Please publish in that. And their impact factor is something which, have, which is unbelievable, which you can't say that how it is possible. You only have two or three volumes of your journals and your impact factor is going up to nine or ten or something like that. Even the best of the best journals will have no, and will not get that kind of impact factors. So that's where you have to think about what is the quantity and quality of the research. There is to be a yes, quantity is good. It probably uh, shows that yes, you are research intensive. But in that quantity, if you don't have quality, that means your research is not impactful. So that's where definitely have to as institutes we have to really look at that so here for us for i am trichy we have we follow the abdc the australian business dean council's ranking abdc ranking for our journals and we acknowledge only one c ranked journals per year other than that the we as a faculty has to mostly publish in B, A or A star journals. And when you are going for promotions and so on, definitely our quality of journals, the publications in A or A stars or a few Bs might be useful. So that's that's the ranking we follow at Ayantrichi here. So again, so uh, that's where each institute has to think about what type of journals, what type of ranking they want to. Like I am Bangalore as their own ranking. So because of course A, B, C are in a different league, so they can do like NUS has also their own ranking of journals. And many in Australian universities follow A, B, D, C. In Europe, they follow A, B, S ranking. So there are various ways you can just the quality of the 
journals to or research to. And this is another thing I feel, yes, this is definitely causing a concern because the vacancies and the gap, there are a lot of vacancies in the institutes and universities, but you have to find the right type, right kind of faculty who can really fill in those gaps. Otherwise it is, if in the same area you are getting the same faculties, then uh, faculties, then it will not enhance that. So when uh, specifically in operations management area, I was been as area chairperson a couple of times in two tenures I have spent and we have looked at that time to see what are like some, uh, we have faculties who teach supply chain management quality or operations. So we generally look for somebody who is beyond that. So earlier we didn't have any faculty who was able to, uh, who, who were teaching project management. So we specifically look for people who have expertise in project management, somebody looking, have an expertise in behavioral operations. So we really look for the gaps or the uh, expertise in an area where we currently don't have. So that helped us in getting faculties with different expertise and we are able to provide different electives to the students. And that actually again further helped gaining our visibility in the industry as well as in the student community too. So now after almost 10 years in existence, we are now getting some very good students. Though we take from CAT, but now we are in the CAT, we are getting the high percentile ones. They are coming there now selecting IAM Trichy as their institutes. Another is of course a lack of funding alternatives, but I, I if time permits, I'll show you some of this. Like we have, of course, in India also we have many and uh, other places also abroad. We have also so many like DAD, the German one uh, funding agency is there. Of course, the Fulbright from US and Marie Curie and Newton fellowships in Europe and so on. So there are a lot of different other funding alternatives. And like at IMT, we also used to have uh, earlier, but again, it is now going to be revived that we have to have internal research grants also of different levels where we have different expectations from the faculty who are applying for these grants internally but those are to encourage faculties like early career researchers to see that yes they are gaining they have some idea and they want to really take that idea to the next level so these internal small grants actually help them to test those ideas so as you can see here with the Deloitte's survey so there is a lot of lack of quality faculties one of this in the Indian higher education they have found out and it's pretty high another is employability and the curricular so these are the three main if you see that those are the three main concerns they had found from the survey so yes I think going forward we have to have more research students coming in who are students getting PhDs so that will help us reducing some of this quality faculty and so on so maybe we can ha we can have some discussion around it uh, later on so we have to really see where we are now as institutes and see how we can really change our direction in a way so that we can start moving towards this research intensiveness of becoming some good research institutes we have faculties who are doing good research as well as good teaching too okay so i'll at this activity i'll probably skip for the time being because i'll just uh, focus a few more points before i close my session today uh, one is of course uh, many of you might have seen this the new uh, education policy where now we have the universities or institutes will have different kind of tags carrying along like research universities or where they have certain criteria they have already mentioned here okay and there is also going to be the teaching universities right they will there the enrollment will be much more but there, these uh, universities, teaching universities does not mean that they will always be teaching universities, but going forward, they might also think about moving towards research universities too, depending on how they 
change the direction over a period of time and same goes for these colleges okay so again for colleges also there is definitely the focus will be on high quality teaching but as you can see in the last point here that it talks about becoming either type 2 or type 1 institution so every everybody has a chance to move on further on but it depends on how the institutes or the universities look at themselves and see the how we can move to the next level so to tell what is a research university again it's it's uh, there is nothing like this if you have these qualities you are research universities but some of these like definitely we know that some top 100 or 150 universities overall and but interesting point here is that quality teaching is not a priority as i was giving the example of nus there the focus is more on are you are you publishing at the best of the best journals are you getting tenured are you getting the funding from a, from outside whether it is from industry or from somewhere else okay so that's why the students also have become very i think choosy they are aware of certain things they know that some of the best universities may be very good in the research but if i have to go for a teaching part or to get a job and my job understand it as a student my focus is to at least get a good knowledge from the courses and a good job then probably they will select some not the top universities based on research but maybe some lower ranked universities with some good teaching too so that's the kind of trade off as a institute or as a university we have to take a look and see where we want to project ourselves so how do we think about building a research cult culture in a context here so i'll just uh, take you through and again in i don't want to be too exhaustive for you to really digest and probably at, after my session i like to hear from you your views because this is what i felt and what i have collected and i am showing it to you based on my experiences so one is the gender neutrality i think yes we should have a diversity based on genders too i think that gives a very different perspective to this and at i am trichy we we definitely look for both both in terms of faculty as well as in the students also actually in last year if we look at last yeah last to last year or last year i think we have the student joining us we have almost 60% female students only 40% male students this year we have again 60% male and 40% female students but we are still very high among other iims so we we specifically look at that and we we felt that in a class scenario or even in this research scenario in the faculty interactions it is very important to get that another perspective we have so this is a very important when you are looking for recruiting faculties or having student cohorts because then you can have very sometimes very meaningful in, uh, interactions happens and you understand different various other perspectives too further we have to have as i talked about citation citation i'll not talk much here because it's not a research uh, thing but yes citations have been a, now or at one point in time citations had become one of the criteria for promotion and that actually led to lot of self citations and that's why now various uh, places citation though is considered as a criteria for citation is nothing but how much your research has been verified or has been referenced by some other researchers at in their research 
so that shows the impact of your research the more citations you have that is means that more impactful but sometimes the self citations actually negate that effect unless that so those self citations are really needed otherwise so there there is again that let's not get into that discussion today then another uh, again the funding part yes now more and more universities abroad i know in india also slowly it probably will come through and maybe you can provide me some insights too that yes uh, the research grants are slowly becoming a criteria for your promotion for your tenure and so on so it's it's becoming it's a thing which now uh, universities or institutes are moving to because it actually gives a visibility the research grants helps university or institutes have visibility outside people will know okay there is this institute or this university exist where the people are getting grants from outside agencies okay so other than that of course the review boards and so on so so to understand the and support as a head and as policy makers we really have to understand how to make it supportive because we should not just think about yes uh, now with nirf rankings and so on i think uh, there is a lot of race to get ourselves our institutes or our universities into that ranking so but it's not always based on that first you develop that culture and automatically the rankings will improve but if you start looking at the ranking first and uh, at those things first and then accordingly you try to work in the institute then that might not develop a culture which you are really looking for because as administrators what we view is not the view same as if we again become the researcher if we take that role of researcher we will see that there is a lot of different things that actually there are constraints as there for researchers too so we have to understand those constraints and try to see as administrator how we can really remove or at least mitigate some of those constraints so that they can prosper so that's why the first thing is to have a critical and caring understanding of the field again that's where the emotional intelligence comes in but this is again as administrator we develop over the year over the period of our administration so we are at different levels again i had some exercise but uh, in the interest of time i'll probably skip this one where i don't want to get into this one but i'll probably focus a bit more on this you look for individual researchers so okay. what in which disciplines they are strong at what they are, what type of research they do okay so the, the, that's way as an administrator we have also have to be in the, uh, careful, uh, be aware of individual strengths and weaknesses too and based on that accordingly we develop a system within the institute so that the individuals can prosper so research productivity is very dynamic and when you talk about as i discussed about that i am teaching we are talking about a star or a journal and b as administrator as researchers we are aware that this publication in journal is not like i submit today to a a star journal does not mean that within 3 years time i will definitely get that journal it might go up to two years for to do the review process and after two years the journal reviewers might come back and tell us sorry your paper is not still aligning with our journal and will not be able to accept it so then again it starts from zero for a researcher so we have to be aware of that of the publication because it's time consuming and that's why the quantity versus quality plays a part but just because it's time consuming does not mean we should compromise on the quality part okay so of course like the administrative processes as i was talking about the process how to make it a bit more less paper intensive and make it much more easier a bit more ease in the process will definitely help 
smoothing the things for the researchers. Of course, in university industry research that I've, I've already explained and we discussed a bit early in my presentation. So I'll not again. So this is again one thing which as institutes, as universities, we definitely should we'll look for how to get this linkages. And these are some of those questions definitely for us to think about. It's not like we are not doing it, but to what level and probably somewhere we can think of. So these are the questions I leave you with. So as teachers, okay. So one thing is that as teachers, as researcher, as administrator, we have to be passionate about what we're doing. So that if that passion is there, definitely the things will move. So I conclude by saying that TS yes, doing. So we have to really move about, move on, and really see how this we can move on, develop a community. For me, it is always as an administrator, I've worked in, in that level as well as a researcher and teacher. I feel that we have to develop a community which really aligns and gels with each other well. And then if you give them certain flexibility, give them that environment, the system builds that environment, the people will automatically start working towards it and making it better. Yes, the results might not be visible immediately, but over a period of time, you can see there is definitely a change. And being my experience with NUS or of course in QT, because I, I'm still in touch with my universities in Singapore, in Australia and other places too. So, I have seen uh, they have now grown. They have uh, the research uh, IS school in, uh, has become very well known for research now in QUT because they have developed over the years. They have recruited. They have got that kind of students. At IM Trichy, I have seen in the last six years, I have been with IM Trichy. We have grown a lot in the research because they have focused a bit more on industry and academia interactions. So that has really helped us. That has really and that's where I feel the top from the top. It's very important to have a direction there so that it helps others in the field and with give and providing that kind of flexibility as administrator so that helps individual to really grow in their field and over the all it definitely benefits the institute yeah thank you very much from my side hello uh, yeah, thanks Ion, a lot for your in-depth lecture and it's re it really connects the research side to the academic side of any institute. No doubt at state level, we are having more focus on education rather than right. research. But at the same time, we must pay attention that uh, when the ranking of institute is concerned hmm. on all uh, grounds, research plays and consultancy and publication that play a very big role. All right. Now, my basic first question I would like to ask is, you have been associated with Rajasthan Technical University, Royal Engineering College, Kota. Yes. And also, uh, NUS, one of, I think, rank number four in the world. You know, its ranking is at present number four in the world as far as university is concerned yeah and now you are at i am three g yeah now looking at this where we are falling at the state engineering level why we are not getting those kinds of consultancy or uh, research work whereas you might have noticed the faculty uh, i mean to say the caliber may not be the best, but they are still uh, viable to do any research, but still industries are not, not opening up. Can you throw any light box on the point of view of the industry, what we are lagging, what we should cover up so that industries do uh, invite us for, uh, because at I mean to say at Rajasthan University level, right from the beginning when I joined, I am doing some kind of consultancy work for the local industry, some kind or other. 
but still i don't see a confidence in them while they are inviting us uh, for those consultancy matlab wo ek ek hota hai ki they are just giving us on a personal interaction basis something like that right but not uh, what you are told uh, you are given example of nus yeah. that they don't want to make it as a backbone hmm वो उसको ऐसा नहीं मानते कि ये मेरा स्ट्रेटेजिक डिसीजन है वो एक ऐसा है कि ठीक है कंसल्टेंसी की रिक्वेस्ट आई है लेट्स गिव गिव देम स्मॉल कंसल्टेंसी बट इट्स नेवर प्लेइंग अ रोल देयर तो व्हाट वी आर वेयर वी आर लैकिंग मेनली और करिकुलम और डिजाइन थिंग्स लाइक दैट कैन यू थ्रो सम लाइट एंड कंपेयरिंग दीज आर टू यू एंड देन एन यू एज देन आई एम थ्री थ्री yeah okay i'll, I'll just uh, yes i understand uh, one thing probably what uh, we can do uh, at uh, i think at r2 level we uh, can be done is one is to now uh, this is a good time because you have more people can join online so you can get some connect with the industries and see how uh, you can if you have a seminar series kind of thing which you can develop because we here at i am trichi we have this kind of seminar series we have developed also over the years where we invite the industry speakers because i think as the community in rtu uh, is a big community of faculties and i think many uh, faculty will have good uh, at least have some connects in different industries and if we can connect ask them to and develop a seminar series the expert seminar series or something you might give it a good name by discuss you can have a student body who can also oversee it and that will actually help one seminar series that will give a visibility similarly as i said in i am trichi we have for every course we have two sessions here marked for the industry person to come and take a session so that is another thing which which you can look at so this first thing is through teaching only you can come into uh, to first get that visibility and also whenever you are going to a particular conference or you can attend uh, whenever you have small cii because here also we are very much active participants in our local cii chapters and so on so in those cases maybe in jaipur or other places we you can get into those small forums and some of the professors like you can go and Ex, uh, exp, uh, discuss your work or what are the work you have done or maybe talk about what are the uh, what is uh, art you known for the particular institute is known for so the expertise the students what are the students and your alumni get them on board if they are now in better places in industry that is also one thing you can definitely do okay so that is one thing we definitely need to work on this one and i was saying one of the uh, honorary alumni is at present delivering this lecture and we are very much proud of you i am i know thank you sir <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really a privilege to really come and do this but yeah i i think we have now my i know my friends are all uh, my batchmates and others are in good in uh, places now so we can always tap into those in the uh, institutes and industries they coming in we can always or yeah so these are some things first let's get connect with the industry and then slowly once they are aware of the institute then there's funding because for us also it took a lot of time to get the funding part because funding the first the industry has to have that kind of confidence in us and that yes we can deliver as you are rightly saying the small mm-hmm. project at but individual level we can always do but slowly that's why as initially i started doing individually then i started involving others from other areas to collaborating with them and some of them are also from other good places so this slowly brings a kind of visibility to us so now after 10 years we are able to do it so i think it it's that's one way to do yeah anybody else has any other views let me share with you on my experience hmm uh, when i was doing research at iit delhi hmm i developed a dental implant there okay and then we uh, my professor professor uh, naresh bhatnagar he told me to develop a uh, transfer of technology document and this word was new to me 
I googled it and there was some transfer technology document available with the professor. So I searched and saw that format. Hmm. So it, at first, what came to my mind is this is not part of my research why I am doing this. Hmm. But uh, as the prof had suggested, I had to do that and it took me some two, three months and more to develop that, uh, I would say, five 500 words, 500 pages, transfer of technology document, get it binded and present to the, apart from my thesis. Then my professor went with that transfer of technology document to CSIR. Hmm. And CSIR, in fact, floated a bit in Economic Times newspaper. If any company is interested in buying this transfer of technology document. Hmm. And there was actually a bid nationwide, and one of the company invested 120 crores in setting up a plant for many, many making dental implant first time in India, mm -hmm. in Faridabad. Mm -hmm. So just because of that research, they invest, they purchased the land, they invested in my plant and machinery and installed and have their sales marketing team, all strategy based on a single research from a lab. Uh, uh, from an educational institute. Right. I was talking of that. If, mm. if a businessman can have so much confidence over a research done in a lab, why we are not? Uh, what happens in quota? We are either designing a small, small things, or yeah. some control charts for the industry, or some <coughs> material handling uh, strategy not a big thing which will change their business or which will set up a new business. How to bring out that confidence at a state level. Where the person is same, I, same I, myself I am doing here, I was doing there. The things get changed. Yes, I think, as I said that we have to start small only. We can't uh, once, uh, but you have to develop the team. I, I, I'll feel that if we can develop along with you a proper team, who can really take it forward because you have to have a vision. I think you have a vision, but others in the team also should have that kind of vision to go there. Yeah. If you Agree. have that perfect team, then slowly you can, you can get it. And that confidence, yes, it's time consuming I, because what example you have given the IIT Delhi and because it's coming from that kind of background, because we have seen if the same for, uh, if I am Bangalore, I am Ahmedabad or Calcutta is, bidding for something along with I am Trichy. Of course, people will have I am B, A, A, B, C will have a better bandwidth there. But we are fighting now those. They are 60, uh, 70 years old institutions. We are only 10 years old, but we are fighting them. Yes, sometimes we lose, sometimes we win. That's that's the way, but we have to take it forward. But that gives us the visibility that yes, I, we have that confidence to fight with them we can also come into come into that so that that visibility is also coming up because we are taking part we are participating in those so that that's how it goes i think it's it's a we have to have our patience but i think we can build a team i think that team is also required because individually sometimes it might not be possible to get that visibility but you have a good team i think we can work on that Well, uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, you have elaborated all the aspects of research. And uh, I hope uh, it will help all the senior faculty members and uh, the management nominees also that what is the importance of research and how by uh, improving the research work, they can, uh, you know, uh, enrich the institution quality and uh, uh, the, ultimately the institution will rise on the basis of research if we if the faculty members will do a better research they'll get better uh, uh, co uh, consultancy and projects and that will ultimately benefit the institution as well as the faculty members and the university itself uh, thank you so much sir being with us and uh, i think uh, all the faculty members uh, uh, please uh, if you have any question you can uh, raise your question please
so i if you like if i get uh, any questions i'll mail to you sir and uh, yes, 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 uh, uh, hopefully you'll uh, you know answer those mails or uh, thank you so much sir again and i request all the participants please uh, uh, rejoin us uh, at 2 pm today and it is requested please be you know in time uh, and uh, say if you it will be better or it will be advisable to join Five minutes earlier to the session. And the next session will be uh, for Professor N. Ravi Chandran, which is uh, uh, professor at I M Ahmedabad. He was earlier director of I M Ahmedabad. So uh, I request all the participants to join in time. Thank you so much, sir. We are thank you very much. It's a privilege. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Manish. Uh, thank you.